In this session, we are together with Tanar Alper. Uh, she will be talking about the cryptocurrencies in the gaming sector. So now I'd like to invite her to our session. Yes, Ms. Alper, welcome again. If you're ready, you can start. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Tanar Alper, the co-founder of Drove Studio. Let me share my screen. First of all, maybe you can see it now. All right, yeah. You can tell me and I can change it. All right. Hello, I am Pinar Alper. First of all, I would like to thank to Wardia Games and Indieway team for organizing this event and their contribution to their game ecosystem. We can go on the second slide. We can change this now. Yes, we can go with the second one. Before I was working as a developer in the middle and small scale enterprises, I'm actually a molecular, I have the background of molecular biology, but I changed my career because my interest in games and at the same time, I am also one of the women representatives of women in games. As Draw Studios, by the way, we have an NFT play to earn game. But this game is a real time game. If you're interested, you can go to worldofinvestments.com to see our game. Could you please go with the third slide, Ms. Jeffa? All right. Next one, please. Thank you. So today I would like to talk about the impact of blockchain in the game sec gaming sector. So first of all, let's talk about what blockchain technology is briefly. Blockchain technology, as the name says, is a chain shape database so platform, a database system with a lot of blocks. The da database concept is important because we are storing data. What we call blog is the smallest units that we can store data on the chain shape. So let's take a look at what's inside these blocks. So the blocks here are the blocks that we would like to store data in. And they have also some two, two, uh, two different codes within. These codes are actually passwords and these passwords are called hash codes. So these two hash codes in these blocks, one of them, has the hash dogs before the previous block and the second hash code has the all encrypted data. So in this way, each block has the block of the previous one. So as these blocks are integrated within each other as a chain, it creates a structure. So with the new blocks added to the system, gets to the last of the order chrono chronologically. Thank you. All right, so next up, uh, this data system, data database system has, but all of these data are encrypted and placed on a network. This encrypted data have their own copy and these copies are distributed to the users on the network. In this way, we get the distributed structure concept. So therefore, the more user on the network, the more secure the system is because the data, it, it means that the data are secured and stored in a confident way. What I mean by users are not the end users, but they are users 
the that are minors that are actually the decision makers in this decision making process these minors are using work approved state approved or game theory like math theories if you are interested in those uh, formulas and concepts you can make a research about it so we can classify the advantages of the blockchain system as four as it is centralized every process is fast the control of every phase and every part of the process makes the whole process transparent and having the data in different types of systems makes it more secure and as at the center there is a mathematical formula and works automatically there is no error margin we can change the slide please over the last uh, two decades, video game industry have witnessed new big changes and new business models. An industry that we pay to play has transformed into an industry in which we can earn money by playing. The pl play to earn games are allowing users to play and in order to play, they have to pay by paying a fee for the subscription. By paying for the subscription, the players can play the game. The history of the games dates back to the pieces, the board games in the past. The advantage uh, of these games is because new users uh, need to come so that no crashes can be faced in those games because less players will mean less success. So blockchain-based games are the other types of games. The players don't have to play in these free-to-play games. You can go back to the, sorry, the previous slide. Yes, thank you. This free-to-play games are free games and the users don't have to pay anything. And uh, of course, there are some in purchase functions. The free to play game was first created in, at the, in, the, in the 90s, but when we came to the millennia, games like Dungeons and Dragons have emerged and they create. So they, they have transformed their model into free-to-play from pay-to-play. This transition, and due to this transition and due to being free-to-play, those games attract many users and many players. With all those the advancements, the in-game items could have been sold in third-party platforms. Users could play, their games and they can sell their accounts or items in the real world or the rare items can be could have been sold on some platforms and on third party platforms as these transactions are on on the third platforms new cheating models or fraud alert, fraud models have have come into existence as well Sometimes people, the players, got deceived by not getting the item or the account they wanted. So the, the, this transition from free to play to play to earn has not been that sharp. So also this demand has been automatically generated, but from this point of view, play to earn model, although it's in our lives for a long time, has been popular more and more due to the advancement and popularity of the blockchain technology. The play to earn games are making the player 
as a part of the gaming ecology. It enables players to earn money while playing the game. You can go on. So the blockchain-based games are using blockchain technologies and they have blockchain elements inside. In these games, the blockchain elements are generally enabling players to trade between each other by using NFTs or other assets. At this game model, the players are not actually try to overcome an obstacle or get to the level. But as a result of those level transitions, they get the reward that we call token or other types of reward. These tokens can be swapped with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. By doing so, players can generate revenue by playing games. As these crypto encryptions are stored in the cloud, the players are the real owners of these properties. So, and in the transfer of the assets, players have no difficulty in changing. You can go on, get the second, the other slide, yes, thank you. And the report, published by BGA Blockchain Game Report 2021, blockchain-based games, uh, the enterprises developing blockchain-based games have received $4 billion in the year 2021. Similarly, on the third quarter of the 2021, uh, the total revenue is $2.36 billion. So 22% of increase has been seen in the profit. And when the first blockchain-based games have emerged, new uh, types of games have also emerged, but in time, due to in some advantages, uh, Ethereum blockchain system have become more popular. Especially the financial power of cryptocurrency enable players to earn money out of games. Meanwhile, the incre it increased the total, to total amount of time spent on the game. Let's take a look at some statistics. The, Axie in the game Axie Infinity, according to the reports in October 2021, monthly, uh, ha monthly has uh, more than 2 million users. Even so, some players have been using the game as their main uh, income source. And especially the, it, it also ever surprised the decentralized models. And there's also another new as well. In, uh, in 2021, December, the curator cryptocurrency wallets based on default, 50% of them, I mean, half of them have been used to play a game. This is what report says. And according to report of Def Betrakar, the game-based NFTs have generated $4.8 billion million and throughout the year 2021, uh, this figure consists of the 20% of, of the all NFTs generated throughout the year. Okay. So there's one concept that we have been hearing for a long time that we call non-fungible token NFTs. Let's talk about it briefly. The description of NFT is non-fungible token. In Turkish, we call it non-changeable token, as it's translated. As the name says, it's a cryptocurrency. It's actually a basic token, but more than a token, it is valued as an asset, as an entity. We, the, the main similarity is due to 
that NFT has the same blockchain systems like Ethereum or Bitcoin. Another difference of NFTs from other cryptocurrencies is that NFTs are original and can be designed on its own. By using blockchain technology, NFTs are producing by Ethereum token standards. But as used in cryptocurrency standards, NFTs using ECR 150 and other standards. ERC 721 standard is about non-changeable NFTs. It's a common standard. It has more distinguishable features, originality. Uh, in order to create those NFTs, we can generate the agreements based on this standard. The best example might be the virtual kittens. Mm. You know, the one of the first viral games uh, is Crypto Kittens. BSE 1155 is a standard that we use for NFTs, for the creation of NFTs, but it's a, like a se second step, the other, the next step for creation of NFTs. This standard is both is supporting the tokens both changeable and non-changeable. It's creating a ground for these agreements. Let me give an, another example. Like a game like World of Warcraft, a player can use both changeable and non-changeable items in their characters and they can use those elements on their NFTs. So to talk about how we use NFTs in games, we can use spaces, fields, items, um, assets in the game. And all of these NFT sets, they have their own value based on their originality and being rare or not. And NFTs are also used for player interaction. For example, uh, your character or avatar can be represented as NFT in the game or digital game, digital assets can also be NFT. Here, NFTs actually belong to, to the player directly, not the publisher. The fact that NFTs do not belong to the publisher and all these data are in the blockchain system and stored there. The, this is how these NFTs belong to the players originally. This enables player to have the exact, a complete ownership of the items that that person has in the game. And based on the originality and uh, based on the originality and the scarcity of the rareness of the item, you can sell them anywhere you want. So let's talk about uh, this topic again, but based on players. Blockchain system creates record of all of the data and enables the, all of the assets independent to be independent. And uh, as we said, they are supporting these NFTs in being changeable and swap, swappable. And this, in this way, players could generate revenues that, it can, that can be repeatable. I would like to talk about some revenue models. One of the revenue models is direct revenue model. In this one, uh, the players are purchasing NFTs or tokens in the game, but they're not using those NFTs or assets to play the game. These assets are not included in the game. 
And in this model, in this way, the players, in a way, finances the uh, game, which makes the, the, the ownership as equity. And the players uh, are able to generate passive income. For example, in some games, these, the, the purchases of spaces or fields are done in that way. In the second revenue model, uh, we see rental revenue. The rental income is for players that are not actively playing. It's another way to generate passive income. And we see that example in the Pegax. Uh, there's a game like Pegax, for those who don't know, it's like a virtual horse racing. Uh, and you use the horse shape NFTs and make them race. And you can participate in some tournaments and the, and the top of three best uh, horses get reward. In this game, there are two types of uh, leasing. One of them, renting, sorry. One of them is the sharing of the reward. The owner of the horse, for example, after uploads the horse on the game, selects that option, the rental revenue, and the leasee doesn't have to pay a something, a money beforehand. The reward that the user can get with those races can, can be shared to other players on the game. All of these transactions are based on smart contracts. Another method is not about reward sharing, but it's about It's about uh, renting the revenue with a fixed price. Like for example, if you like to rent an NFT, you have to pay something. And then these NF, the, the reward, the token or money you generate with, by using the NFTs are collected by the uh, leaser. In the, sec uh, the third uh, model, we see the token-based revenue model. In this model, the right of use of the asset belong to the person having the rights and you can rent the NFTs and participate in games. In this model, those who own the NFTs can rent their NFTs to other people and they place importance on the competence of the person renting them. Uh, in this lease uh, transaction, the property owner is trying to make sure that the, that the person renting it has the competence and they have right to refund it back if they don't think so. The fourth one, the asset utilization. In this one, the user are not, is not the only owner of the assets, but they can also generate revenue by actively participating in the game. So you can both participate in games and get in tournaments. At the same time, you have your own, you have the ownership of your uh, asset. Other than those business models, there are other business models as well. For example, there are some counselors, uh, the paid counselors, or Uh, some players who wants to try to rent their NFTs for those, and there are some people trying to that 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 are headhunters for for in terms of finding them.
And there are also advertisement companies, uh, marketing companies to, uh, to publish advertisements for uh, the leaser. So the fact that the in-game tokens have value in real time, and also the fact that the gamers, the players are pre perceiving the game as a source of income, created the concept called game fee. This changed the concept of game. So instead of spending money in the game, they perceive this process as investing in the game. And that's how we have this digital economy. And we talked about pay to play and free to play games. And as you said, this in game assets can be sold in a common marketplaces and it show that these NFT games and play to earn games have in game token designs and it is a value created in accordance with the market and it gets real value because players are using and paying for these things and as we said as we all heard about token economics are created from that so total supply of a specific coin for example is one of the data that is uh, important for this. And as it is in the all economy systems, supply and demand have an effect on the price of a token. And that means to achieve in-game economy stability is very important for creating stable pricing for NFTs within the game. In blockchain games, the game economics are similar to a maybe company economy, but uh, in a lot of ways, it is also a simpler state economy. In, in such ecosystems, growing these systems in a sustainable way, it is similar to having treasuries and central banks and monetary policy as we say axi infinity game is an example for example they have the they have the state economy models and corporate economy models combined in this game and for example in democratic states for example they have they would have one person one vote but in corporate systems they have a voting power based on their token value so it also controls the central treasure and similar to national states they have a common goal for this economy and a new token economy also has to have inflation and deflation balance and for the control of the treasury is very important for the growth of this economy. And the thing that we are hearing more about is decentralized autonomous organization shortened to DAO, it is managed by a community and it is not centralized in authority. In these DAOs, people who have voting powers, who own tokens or NFTs, 
they manage the system and in your crypto wallet the owners of these tokens are the people who are part of the management of this uh, economy and these people vote uh, in a system and owning more governance tokens means you have more voting power the amount of tokens you have increases your voting power and the rules and regulations of DAOs are written in the source code of these systems and these rules are processed by uh, the algorithm created for the system so it's a self-governing system but of course it has to be open to change and adaptation and to change a rule in DAO, they have to hold a vote in this system. The people who have governance tokens, people who keep their voting rights in the system can vote for the changing of the rules and also creation of the new rules and crypto this is guaranteed by the crypto technology and creates a democracy specifically created for this organization. And in DAOs, to be able to become a member of that project, you have to own a specific amount of tokens and that changes, the amount changes by organization, of course, is not a fixed number. And people can purchase governance tokens or is as it is in uh, the play to earn model, they can do missions and within the game and they can earn governance tokens within the game. As it is in the NFTs and social networks, as demand increases for these tokens, the value increases as well. At the same time, DAOs are receiving feedback from their user base in addition to their testers. And some functions are requested by their users and some deficient, different decision-making processes of the game like uh, the UI or anything else are decided by everybody. And that's all I were to talk about. I would like to thank everybody who has listened to me. Yes, we don't have any questions in the Q&A area. If there are questions in the room, we will be able to answer them. You have questions in the room. What do you think about the future of this industry, especially in terms of play to earn games? Do you see, do you see the, what do you see about the future of the hypes and the scam issues? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, actually, there's a change in the ecosystem in the play to earn games because in these kinds of games, you usually there are two different tokens, as we said, the governance tokens and uh, other tokens. And there is infinite supply in uh, one of them. And in token, token economies, these inflation and deflation uh, balance is very difficult to have and of course games are going moving forward to not play to earn but play and earn model which is uh, coming up and i think more, a lot of the games are going to transition into play and earn and and our 
game called Wolf of Investments are actually using this play and earn model. And it's important that the game is not just about uh, earning money, but it is uh, very critical for players to enjoy the game as well. And it is very difficult to control that. And I'm hearing that there are a lot of great games that are developing in that sense. Thank you. Is there any other questions in the room? I don't think there is. Thank you very much for your participation. I would like to thank you. We would like to also have you in our other events. It was a very inspiring speech, uh, as we can see. I wanted to be there physically, but I am outside of the town. Hopefully, I will be able to join you physically. We expect you at Gaming Istanbul in September. Of course, of course. Thank you very much, Missile Pair. See you later.